One fine fall day, nine men and a woman boarded a flight in Los Angeles, which would take them to Paris. They were Hollywood screenwriters, and what they may not have known is that they were about to embark upon a remarkable adventure. When they arrived, they discovered the French police had been alerted and were waiting for them. Do we get to arrest anybody? <laughs> no, 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 no. Except if you want me. Okay. If you want me, if we didn't want You would arrest us. Yes. I should have been seven days. Why? Why? Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah. You know, no reason. <laughs> and what became quickly clear to them was the well-worn tourist routes would not be their route, for they had come to France to find inspiration and new ideas and to meet French people with strange and wonderful stories to tell. Film France had given them one single mission, to open their eyes to writing movies set in France. One of our very first days here, we tra traveled on the Seine, and we had a chance to sort of see all of Paris from a completely different perspective. You don't think of Paris as being a water city, and so you realize it's essentially a very quick road throughout the whole city, and with unique characters and unique um, situations of how you get through the city on the water. For us, writing's always about experience and you can't, um, you can't uh, plan on when inspiration is gonna hit or when you draw on a, an old memory and, and maybe not for a project you're working on right now, but, um, but things always appear in your, in your work. So I imagine we're gonna, uh, there's going to be a scene on a police boat in, a river, in the river in Paris at some point and something that we do, but it's great. I think I will uh, certainly remember the, uh, the underground uh, Seine tour. Uh, I think that had a, a very big impact on me. Um, you know, it was, it was truly seeing the underbelly of something that uh, we have not seen before. Uh, in terms of film spaces, it's, it's very unique. You know, when we did the tunnel there and everybody was thinking, Vampires, guns, high-speed chases, James Bond. You know, the first thing I, I thought was Jean Gabin and in Le Jour Se Lève. I, I don't know, I had this image of somebody like Jean Gabin and, some, and a woman sneaking into there in the evening. He takes her in there and they walk along the thin sidewalk with the water splashing their feet and have a romantic scene as he snuck her into this special place. So, wherever the screenwriters went, they discovered the doors were open, wide open. I really loved uh, getting the chance to see City Hall and getting the chance to see the, the true, you know, where everything happens uh, firsthand. I think it lends a, a sense when you talk about the relationship between the United States and uh, France, it, it really lended an authenticity. Now I have faces to place with names, <laughs> and that's very important. Less hardy souls might have found the pace daunting. But even in the middle of the night, this small band from Hollywood found inspiration in the sprawling Runge's Market. With them that early morning were the same chefs who would cook their dinner that very night. Runge's was, uh, that was, that was fascinating. I, I couldn't take my eyes off everything I was looking at. And the fact that there's this city with, you know, essentially 20 to 25,000 residents working there and it's and it's three eight-hour shifts and it's always going um, and everything's there and everything's for sale and everything and just the smells the sights the sounds it seems like you could certainly make a movie I've learned more about French beef than uh, I've ever known before as guys who tend to write action thrillers or movies where they're set in a lot of different locations, there's a lot of stuff going on, there are people quite often doing nefarious things. You know, it gives us a, a different view into a city and, and, and the, some ideas and some inspiration of where to possibly move these, you know, move our movies. And I think what you actually take from a trip like this is not the thing that you expected to take, nor is it even the thing that people wanted you to take. 
But you take a whole other thing. You take the feeling of generosity. It affects you emotionally, probably even more than it does intellectually. So in a way, I think the trip had an effect on us, a deeper effect than we had expected. One of the places few outsiders have ever seen is a discreet series of rooms high atop a Paris train station where all the trains in all of France are constantly monitored. That's 14,000 trains carrying nearly 2 million passengers each day. The uh, people that we meet think we're all insane because we go behind the scenes at the train station and um, see how the rail lines are done. And the questions we're asking are, how does a terrorist get on a train? Uh, how, what happens in the case of a bomb blowing up the tracks? And they're looking at us like, uh, maybe we should put them on the list. But we're just trying to think of action sequences and how we can you know, exploit this. We are in the Paris flea market right now, which is fantastic. It's sensory overload and I love all the different compartments and already you're thinking, okay, what can I do here? Romantic comedy, you know, family <laughs> vacation. Um, this is great. Just the atmosphere of it, you know, going down little alleys or um, into nooks and crannies and so, and all of, you know, everybody loved like the strange things with the skeletons and the stuffed animals. <laughs> Uh, actually, it's been good for me. I mean, I have an idea that's taken root in the last two days that might take place in some of the places they've shown me, but also just being here and enjoying the country and understanding more about how film is supported here makes this seductive. It seems like, wow, you know, it would be much more fun to film in France. Only a few short days later, the screenwriters were back in a Paris train station, but this time to ride the high-speed train to Marseille for the second part of their discovery tour. Always looking for new story ideas, new locations, in France, where access is unlimited. <laughs>